Welcome back to the channel. We are back at um, back at work after being away for two weeks, or I am, should I say. So I'm here for a couple of days doing a job for a friend of mine around for quite a long time before I then go and join the lads in the middle of this week. So we we'll have to go and have a look now at the job we're doing, which is a simple gable-ended roof, five metres by three metres, quite standard, with a big uh, ridge, steel ridge. So we've got a bird's meth over that, so I'll show you what we're going to do there. And then I'm gonna get my tool out for you. Get your minds out the gutter. I bought a new hand tool. So let's have a look at that as well. So there we have it. Wall plates have all embedded on for us while I've been away. And as I said, there's the big steel airlock, former ridge. Talk about over engineering, but there we are. Rather than it's only two meters, and I think it's about a 25 degree pitch, something like that, I can't remember now. I looked at this job a while ago while I was waiting for this to be built. Now, we haven't built this. All I'm doing is, for a friend of mine, I am doing the timber work on it, that's all. My dad's joining me, but he's, uh, he's camera shy. He won't be on camera. You might see him in the background, but he's not gonna be filmed on camera much. So, all we're gonna do now is, as I've done before, get a timber on top of there, work out the angle of our roof, sort the bird's mouths out, and like I've already said to you, I'll show you my new tool. Got our trestle set up in there. The guy said you want a scaffold up and it was going to be too expensive for him to get scaffold up all the way around here and put a bird cage in. So I said, you know what? Just put trestles up for me so, and I'm happy with that. And we'll get the big ladder up this end. Our first job, fit the timber into the steel. And you'll understand why in a minute, even though the rafter is burst meathering over the top, what I want to do is put a timber inside the steel. So I've had the whole holes drilled in it, which you can just about see there. Uh, which then allows me to, once a bird's mouth's over, I can then put a timber lock screw straight through the top of it into the timber and anchor it down because it's on top of the steel. Now, it would be okay if I got a ridge, but I haven't. A wooden ridge, that is, to fix it to. However, we have got collar ties in across here, with it, so that shouldn't be a problem. I'll get on with it. We're going to go through everything we're going to do anyway. I'll show you this new roofing square. I haven't used it yet. I've just watched it multiple times with Dan from Essential Carpenter Tools using it. And then we'll set out everything first, the Veloxes, on this wall plate and get ourselves some dimensions. So let's get this uh, timber in the steel first then. There we have it, 72 bolted in. I put the round side on this side because there is more rafters to go in this side because of the doubles for the Velux. And if I hit it the other side, where the threads are sticking out, then so be it. But there isn't any point in trying to work out where your holes are gonna be in correspondence with your rafters because you'll always hit one, it's a fact. The only thing I did make sure is I come in 150. So when I put my first rafter in at 50, 50 million from the wall, I'm not going to hit it. Uh, so we'll work that out. If I then have to take the thread off from the little grinder and then notch over the top, then that's what I'll do to make sure it goes in the right place. But the advantage we have guys, it's burst mesh on the top of that steel. So it's not going to affect any structure if I take a little square notch out to go over the top of the bolt. Not a problem at all. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get this uh, roofing square out. As you can see on the screen now, I use their app, which is great. So you just need, first of all, you need your span width, which is outside to outside wall plate. 
then you need the thickness of your ridge. In this instance, I've got zero. And then uh, it then works out that you need the pitch of your roof. So I'll show you how I do that next. And then you add that into the app and off you go. But for this example, I've just typed in 30 degrees. So check it out. You haven't got to get up on the roof again till you put your first raft on. So let's have a look at that first of working out. You're getting your pitch sorted. What my dad's doing first is just getting ourselves a centre of the of that steel, which ultimately is the centre of our um, ridge. So there we are. We'll measure to that first. And then what I want to do is, again, this is just to get a rough idea of where we are for the length of rafter. Yeah. Roughly, because we've ended up with six metre C24s because they haven't got any 4.8s in stock. So um, all we'll do is, we'll just get the tape measure on that now. Just hold that up there, that roughly in the centre of that, on our centre line, there or thereabouts. That's it. Now this is going to be the short to the shortest cut now, because that's about where the timber's going to be. And if I pull that there now, we are looking at about, about a two metre there. There or thereabouts, because what I don't want to do is interfere with that window, which, looking at it, I don't think it's going to anyway. So I'm going to get myself about a two metre rafter there. Okay, we'll have a look at that. Get ourselves a two metre cut. Then what I can do then is you sit it on top of here, top of there, and on top of the steel. And I'll then show you how you get your roof pitch, or how I do it anyway. As I've said before, it's not the only way, just how I do it. Our first rafter then. What we're gonna have up, we've just been talking. I think we're gonna try and get the cut off, the plum cut for the fascia. So the fascia then finishes in line with that reveal. Because even though it's gonna be changed to a, to a a floor to ceiling window we think it look quite nice if it's kept in the reveal there so that will sort of out so what we're going to do now with this one is we're going to bird's mouth over here don't forget it's a uh, maximum a third of your timber you should take up your bird's mouth so we'll work that out now which is about 40 45 50 mil something like that because this is a 62 and then we'll bird's mouth over that the same so unlike before and if you've uh, not seen me do it before this is the, the lean to roof what i showed you what i normally do if you're going against a timber, against your ledger plate. But in this instance, we are going um, bird's mouth over the steel, bird's mouth over the wall plate. So this will go down exactly the same in parallel. So we haven't got to worry about it. So we're going to work out now how to do the, um, work your, your plum cut out. So what do, all you do, and this is obviously for a new roof, you can do this method, or you can or do, do it inside a loft, if you can get inside the loft and work out the same. Just do it anywhere on the timber, Dad, just to give us our level line so we can get a plum cut. So once you've got your mark on there, because it's in the plane it's going to be in, if you put a level line down there, that's your plum cut, and that then gives you your angle of your roof. So we'll take that onto the bench, and I'll show you this new square. Isn't an unboxing video, but there we are. This is the box it comes in. And you get this bit of paper, which before the app that you've already seen, you should get this bit of paper with all your calculations on. But there is an app now, so you get that in the box. And then you get your fence, that's one part of it, right there. Now he's working in conjunction with Bench Dogs now for a, um, a router jig. So if you haven't got a router jig, have a look. I have been sponsored, I haven't given this, I bought it myself. Let me just put this down and get this out of the box. So here is the square in its two parts. You take this apart. That then drops into there, like that. What I can say is it uh, it's weighs a bit. It's nice, I like it. Well manufactured, and as you can see there, roof pitch. If you can see that in the light, roof pitch there, look. And then there's hip on that end. So all you do, that there, if you can see it on camera, because it's a bit wet, is the angle of our roof. So we just put this onto here, and we work out like that in a minute oh you get it in a minute oh god it's all gone wrong so we'll put that on there anyway we'll put that on there and we'll work out what angle we've got um and you move your square to, to mark, get on your mark and then uh you go from there right let's do that for a minute okay first little issue i found is it looks like you can only put it on and i'll stand corrected you can only put it on one way so of course you can't flip your square over you got your mark there, which we've done, and because it's on this side of the timber, we can't we can't use it. We can't use our mark because, unlike other squares that are sort of double, this only goes on the timber one way because you can't flip it over. Look, 
So what we're going to have to do is go back up onto the roof and put this mark on the other side of the timber. So when we flip it over, as you can see, it's going to go that way. So then what we can do is put that on there and then work it out. And yet I could square my marks around, but then it gives you a false, a bit of a false reading potentially. So that's, that's a bit of a downside, but you know what? It's not that bad really. We just remember next time which side the timber we've got to put it on. Let's go and do that first and we'll come back and start again. Right then, first use of the square. At least we know now it's got to be, as you look up the roof, that way, it's got to be on the left-hand side of the rafter. So we've done that. That little mark there is just our crown. As I pointed out before, you've got to put your rafter crown up so it does that. So it then when it goes in um, compression, if that's the right word, it goes down. There, there, that's it now, look. So you can set that now, look. We just move this now, move this dial. We can move that round there and get that in line with that, like that. And that, can you tighten that down, please? Tighten that down. And there we are. And it gives you the pitch of your roof. I'm doing something wrong here. That's on. I'm doing something wrong here, I mean, I. Because that, that's showing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay I've had a bit of an issue with the square and it was a user error now it's bank holiday Monday end of August and Dan who's made the square I've just contacted him on the um, technical line on a bank holiday and he answered the phone he's at then, then allowed me to whatsapp him to explain to me being stupid how I couldn't work out in my head why this didn't line up. Now, it's because if you, like me, is used to a square that's got two sides, you can flip it round, do it whatever way you want. That's what you get in your head. And that's what I've got in my head. And it's this simple. If you have it this way around, so your plum cut's here, top of your after, plum cut this side to your right as you're working, then that's what it does. There's my 25 degrees, look. That's my bird's mouth. That's my, plum, that's my uh, seat cut. That's my plum cut there. I'm just going to move this up and down now to suit my third. Get the measurement of my rafter from there down to here. Strike it down. Move it along. Set my third using this sliding bevel. Mark it. Cut it. It really is that simple. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. User error. This is going to be quite quick now. So, moving on. Just going to get a measurement now up here which we've just done so what we did was because we know we are going to um do an equal bird's mouth top and bottom that's the face of my steel so my steel sort of sits in there and then that part will then sit on top of the steel again we'll show you in a minute this part is the is the back end so the inside face of the wall plate so now all i've got to do is, is set my depth on here now my third sit that in there like that and then I'll set this, cut that out, cut that out and sit it on the top. We'll then get our length, because think we're going to do, um, just plumb cut it level with the brickwork and then you allow you then to put a 6b1 on and a bit of capping board in line with that reveal. So with the gutter then sits in that sort of space, there, where that reveal is there, it'll sort of sit here. So that's the plan. So we'll cut our first ra rafter. This will then become pattern and we'll go from there. And thank you ever so much again to Dan for answering his phone to me and sorting out my stupidity on a bank holiday. Thank you, mate. Much appreciated. Should we get on with something?
that's our first one cut. Nice and tidy bird's mouth. And we are up there, nice and tidy again. Try shaving in there. On our steel. And that there and just that's what we're gonna do now is just bird's mouth it over the top of the steel, look if you can see. And that plum cut is in the centre of our steel now, so, so that's it. That's what we're gonna do. So we'll pattern cut all we'll do now, we'll get this because that end's fixed in the wall. That end, the brick is allowed that to be a bit loose so we can move it to adjust to make sure we're parallel from here to the face of that, which is what you should make sure you do. It should be parallel. Unless you end up with a bit of a curve in your roof. What you don't want is, is this to happen like that or sort of a curve if these aren't parallel, that face and that face. So we'll move this along now. As always, we'll mark that as pat which we know we'll put Pat on there now before we forget. We'll move it onto this end and we will make sure that it's parallel all the way across. We'll pat and cut our rafters once we have set out the wall plate. So we'll set our first wall plate out now. I'll find out what the dimension of the um, Veloxes are, or key light in this case, roof window. And then I'll, um, I'll then get it in the centre, work out my, where my doubles are going to be and work out that way and out this way. But we can continue and cut our rafters now because we know in a minute what we're going to do is we're going to get that, put it back here, work it where the length's going to be, cut that off and we can cut them all off the same. So as you can see there, we just set that and that looks like it's got to go. What's that, that about four or five minutes or something? So yeah, we'll give that a bit of a lift. It's, it's nice and square there. But it's got to go over about five or six mil. Right on the, on the yeah, well, it can actually come. It's got to come this way a little bit down because it's come off the compo a little bit now. So it maybe it's got to come no, over six right. mil. So that's pretty good, that is. No, that's so all we'll do now is we'll check it on the other side. Oh, let's come back a bit. We'll go on the other side now to check that. Check it that side as well. I must see how square we are. But um, the brick has done a nice job with the brickwork, and this is all. This is nice as well. All nice and level. So we'll have a look at that, pat and cut that, and we'll go from there. But that wall there is staying as a feature wall. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to fix the building inspector. See, if I fix a bracket on that corner, on the inside face, same over that side, which will be done after the block work's done. He's happy with that, because I can't put wall plate straps in there, because you're gonna see them. But this side, as you can see, I can put, I'll put two this side on the brickwork there and I could put one on that pillar over there, but we have got collar ties in. Worst case is if you want some, I can then get some 300s and then tech screw into the steel because we've got quite a hefty piece of steel here. But we'll have a look at that. We'll chat, chat with the building inspector and we'll go from there. So we'll carry on now. I shan't show you any more now until we start, start setting out and we've got all these Veloxes set out and we're starting to some rafters. So we'll crack on because it's gone a bit dark over the back of Bill's mother's as I say in the black country. Let's carry on. So we've got our first four rafters set. So one that end, one that end, and then our double, which will be a double, sorry. And you can see sort of marked there for the Velux. And then we've split it into three. So we've got another Velux here, likewise over there. We put this in now because there's gonna be no cast in this steel. So we could, we've pattern cut all these now. So we know that this wall plate is parallel to this steel. Now, if you were doing a timber ridge, what we'd have to do is you'd have to do one that side, one that side, because if you don't, what can happen is if you load one side, your ridge will do that, and then you'll struggle to push it back when you put this one on. But because we've got a steel, this is perfect for us. So we can just do that one like that, load all this side. So what Dad's doing now is we've got pattern. I've cut all the rafters under mil over size, into three because you've got six meter lengths unfortunately because it's c24 they've only got six meter lengths so we're just sitting them on top there now like that give me a couple of tick marks i'm then getting my new square filling the lines in so to speak and then cutting them out and then dropping them back here dad's then getting a handsaw cutting the bird's mouth out cutting the bird's mouth out on that one and that's it keep ourselves efficient as we can so there's 11 to do in total so we'll get all these cut now and then we'll drop them on and then we'll do this one, check pattern again, put this one on, good to go. Now, what I have done, because, 
Even though we're putting collar toys on, what I've been doing is, I've been fixing, as you can see there, look, and there, and I'll do it every single one. We've been using these, um, I can't think what the brand is, Timber Fix. I'll show you it down there in a minute anyway. The box is down there. Timber Fix structural screws. I've been putting these in, like that, into there, like that. Six inches in, straight into the wall plate, straight into the into the steel there, look like, into the timber there, which is why I bolted it in, which is why I explained to you. That's why I put this in, so I can make sure I get a good fixing. Okay, all this side, this, as I look at it, left-hand side, rafters are all cut. We're going to put them all on now. We'll stop for something to eat. And then we'll start on the opposite side. So let's do that. So we've gone ahead and fitted this side exactly the same as this side now, but I couldn't put the camera anywhere to film me doing this because that's next door neighbour and there's nowhere to sort of stick it other than that garage roof that you've seen me when we did this one in the time lapse to see us, so it seemed pointless. Um, but all these are all nice and tight, a nice tight bird's base. And then as you saw in the, in the well, as you can see in the footage now, we then timber lock um, into the top, as I said to you straight into the, uh, not tin block or sculptural screw, in the top, 90 degrees to the rafter, so it goes right into the wall plate. And we've done that on every single one, every single one over there, and I'll repeat exactly the same to these, but these are all, all tight, nice and tight. And then I'll temporarily fix a, a nail into there, and then I'm gonna get a tin block then again, 90 degrees down here into this timber, which is what it was there for. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, we know we've gotta be, we've gotta put a collar tie in, and we know we've got to have 125 to 140. There's debate at the minute what, on the, what the plans say, which is right. So we're going to come 145 from here to the underside of our uh, timber now. What we're going to do now, if I can sort of do it one-handed, is we'll, get, we'll pick one of these. We'll put a piece of timber on there, which is 45 mil, like that. And then we'll get ourselves level, which is there. And then we can then mark on there, on there, and that'll give us the shortest length, or what will be, of our collar tie. Because the collar ties are going to go from here to here, and then a big splay cut, and then back across. It gives plenty of fixings, and we've got some coach screws for that. So we're going to go ahead and do that, because we need two hands, or two pairs of hands. So I should put the camera down. We'll do that. We'll get a collar tie cut, and we'll show you what we're doing with that. That's pretty much how we're going to do it. As I said then, all we did, got a measurement that is slightly short of the top of the rafter now, just slightly. And we've got our timber back in on there, put the level on the other side. Make sure it's level, make sure it's not sticking above the roof. Put a couple of nails in there, we're probably going to go nails there, like that, nails like that, nails like that. And then um, one 70 mil or 80 mil M10 um, coach bolt in the middle for the spread. But when we say spread, this is bird's mouth over the top of this anyway, so it can't drop because it's got to pull off that. So there we are. So this is when I understand the bird's mouth on top of the steel. 
but not normally. But won't go into that. I had a few comments about that on my lean too. I thought I didn't do that, but don't see the point. Anyway, so we're just leveling that up now. We'll make sure it's not above the level. I'll give him a hand and put the camera down and put a couple of knives out to hold it. String line between that one and that one and put the rest of them in. New day then. So we finished yesterday fitting these two collar ties, as you know, and then we prepped our remaining collar ties to go across here. Jobs today then, just put the collar ties in, put the bolts in, finish putting those timber fix or structural screws in the top onto the, onto the uh, timber into the steel. I'll run the rattler all over the bolts again, because as I've explained before, I like using the coach um, screws because they're not gonna pull out what I've known these loosen. So I shall check them again. Well, obviously, because it was my soggy wet timber. And then we've got to put the building straps on here. We've got to put the building straps across here. So I've got some tech screws for there. I've decided to do that. Building strap there. And then we're going to put a building strap on there and then across this block work here. And then onto that one and across the brick, big able there. That's the plan. And hopefully then the uh, roofer will come today as planned. Have a look at the job. Oh, yeah, we've got to finish the bedrocks as well. Top and bottom. Put the last rafters top and bottom and put the timbers in either side. But we need to know where the collar tie is going to come, which is quite tight. We need a bit of a design where it goes inside the collar tie. But there we go. We'll have a look at that. Right then, let's get on with it. Collar ties are in, uh, and I'll stop the uh, time lapse because do you know sometimes you think, Oh, we'll do this instead, and then you frustrate yourself because it you seem, seems to take it longer, even though it didn't. And what I mean by that is putting the string line across from there to there and dropping them down, but then it's a bit of a struggle, if I'm honest. So we got the six foot level, we ended up putting it between the two, but oh, and you're not going to see it on there, but that's that's perfectly in line there, that's perfect. So I'm happy with that. Then what I've done is I've gone round and I've put six nails in every one 90 mils and then i'm going to get these 75 mil m10 um coach screws turbo coach screws and just put one in the center there as well as um and then what i'm going to do i'll go along then and put them into these oh, let me come back put them into these doubles as well as well as i've just seen me do I think I was time lapsing. I've put double nails all the way down, and that's about every 200, every 250 mil for the doubles, as well as the coach screws. Right, what my dad's doing now is using these. Go on, Dad, carry on, Dad, carry on. So, using these, um, these, uh, what are these, 60s, Dad? 70s, 60 mil 60, hammer fix, 60, 60. Um, straight into the, the block work. I've said it before, you're meant to do maximum 150 up from the bottom of your strap. You can't get any more than that for fixings wise. And then I normally go one per block and apparently that seems that seems perfect. Then what we'll do is we'll make sure that's tight on there and we'll put two inch, two, two inch tens into the top of the wall plate as well. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put another two straps then, probably one there and one there. Cut the big ones off, because I wasn't gonna buy a difference, and then use these. 50 mil um, tech screws into the steel. One of them, one into the steel, one into the wall plate there, and two into the top. And that'll be plenty. So Dad's going to carry on with that while I start fixing all the bolts into here and putting all those fixings into the the doubles. So what I'll do is then, I ain't going to film that. I shall show you. I might show you me drilling one and fixing one, and then after that, it's repeat, repeat, repeat. So I'll show you in a minute once we've finished process for this is this simple center pilot hole just to stop the impact of struggling even though this big thing wouldn't struggle and then oh let me pick the bits up one of these in the end of there and rattle it in about you 
here, but I, I reckon that's got that collar tie. What do you reckon? I think so. Right, so we just thought we'd show you these. We've done the one be uh, behind the camera there. We just thought we'd show you these then. So um, these are tech screws and these are designed for biting into metal. However, because it's quite thick, we've decided to do a part at all first. Um, so all you normally do is you normally make sure that your part at all, can you see that on camera? That the bit is as wide as the shank and not the thread. Now I know that these this end bit there is designed to bite into, but this is a bit of a helpy hand really. But that bit is exactly the same size as that one. So all we'll do first then, start this off. Right, put the hole in first. And these are a PH3, so always make sure that your bit is located in the, in the top of the screw properly because it'll just smash the bit off else. And then nice and steady. Again, that should help anyway. Nice and steady. Now, back it off a little bit if it starts to bite so you don't snap your screw off or your, or your drill bit. And, uh I don't think that's going anywhere, do you? Uh, no. Excellent. That should keep the inspector happy, shouldn't it? And if it doesn't, well... <laughs> Finish the bolts in. Put all the bolts in there, look. Up there, up there, up there. So there's five in each side. Bear in mind, this is only a, a two metre in, in total rafter from top to bottom from the top of there all the way to the bottom of there is only two meter after so five of them in there i think it's adequate so like i said, i've put them in every every double as well as the uh, 250 mil space in double 90 mil now as well as you would have seen on the footage that we put these in tech screws in there one of those in a steel is adequate more than adequate one of them in there strap that side strap that side and now what we're doing is we're putting the strap this side and we put um, three two inch tens into the wall plate and then put that across there now before the comments start to come in I know this isn't what you do however this is a feature wall I've spoke to the inspector and because it's collar tied uh, and the fact that I am putting the those timber lock screws six inch into each one of these as well as they're happy that it's all together now that will go into there like that so that will stop any pull but don't forget you've got that you've got the collar tie you've got the but the bird's mouth over the top of the steel you've got all that and it's all linked and this is strapped as well so there's no splay possible anyway i'm not going to fight my case anymore because this isn't my decision this is just what they've asked me to do so we're going to put another one of those straps this side as well but there's no block work there so what we'll do we'll rattle it into this one nice and steady and then when that term block work goes in then before they come and dab it all i have said to him i'll happily come back after work put another screw in there not a problem or he can put it in so that's what we're going to do. But don't forget, we're going to have these straps going across here as well. So we've got to put some 4 by 2 in here, which I'll show you in a minute, to carry the strap, which is like a gable end strap, which what happens is the strap goes over the top into the, the block work and then um, comes across on top of the rafters and fixes in. But I'll show you what I mean anyway in a minute. They're just gable straps. Other than the Velux now, or the three Veluxes, we've got to do, which as I've already said, we've got to put a, a top rafter on bird's mouth over the um steel and a bottom one on bird's mouth over the wall plate i've just finished putting the um straps on so all we've done is we've worked out where the coarser bricks are going to come so there's two coarser bricks under there so i've set that now so two coarser bricks on there that gets built in i've then put a piece of 4x2 in and it should go across two rafters which it does don't see the point in this wall plate strapping because the size of this from wall plate to top of gable is about 800 mil. There's no way on this earth it's moving, but they're in. I've put it above the roof so it's not enough for any insulation. So I've done that. I've just finished putting all these um, structural, six inch structural bolts in, or screws in, sorry, into the timber. I put in the steel. I did have to rattle these again. They were a little bit loose, believe it or not. I did them yesterday, but it was soaking wet. Of course, the heat today's dried them out and yesterday. And I did have to tighten them again, which is why I don't like using them, because you can never guarantee they're going to stay tight. Yes, you could double nut it, but even then, 
it'll still loosen because the timber shrinks if it's soaking wet, especially if you do work in the winter. So be mindful of that, which is why I prefer to use those things there. Anyway, enough said about that, enough said. What we're going to do now is the roof is coming in a moment and we're going to discuss with him with regards to the bottom of the Velux so I can try and get it sort of gauge for him for his tile to save him struggling and then we're going to work our way up but we are going to have a bit of a detail and I'll show you that now. We are going to frame this in a minute anyway as I've just said but as you can see from here or you might not be let me turn this way so it's not in the sun. The gap between the bottom of the collar tie there now and the wall plate isn't enough to get us a velox, but they want three veloxes in here, which is fine. What we're gonna have to do now is we're gonna have to just get our velox centralized or sort of sitting in between there, which then means you're gonna have almost like a, a, a step detail, which we can't get away from that because you can't get a velox small enough to go in there. And they want veloxes, so this is a compromise. But it's gonna be a bit of a bit of a funky detail, but a detail is a detail and it's sometimes you've got to do these things just try and make it look as best you can which i think it look quite nice have it a nice bit of bit of nice detail in the roof i think but i'll stop babbling on and we'll see how we get on okay we've had to stop and rethink a little bit because because i went to sleep last night and then woke up this morning i forgot what i was talking about yesterday i re realized that that gap that gap and that gap over there is one the 600, which I know because we've gone either side of the Velox. So we've just cut three more rafters. We're going to drop one in there, in that gap there, in that one and in that one. So we'll put them in and then, yes, we are finished. And then what we'll do is we'll line the little stubby um, rafters above the Velox in line with them to make it look nice and tidy. That's what we're going to do now. I'm not going to film it because it's just samey, samey. And then, yes, we are going to go into structuring the Velox. Right, then it may be difficult to show you what we've achieved here in terms of putting our first uh, timber in, which is then forms the opening up there like that for the Veloxes. The roofer came and it's rained, so we stopped filming, which is why we've filmed none of this basically. But what he said was he wants 13 and a quarter inches from here to the top of his first lath, which is there, that line there. Your lath has got to be 130. 120 to 140 down from your Velox. Now that's the Velox there, look. That's the Velox. So that's 130 mil we've gone from the lath to there. So that's what the instructions say. Then all we've done is to try and put these in the uh, the way they're meant to go is we've then got the plumb this down, look, like that with a level, and then come to this corner and then step this first one back. So then what it means is when you look from underneath, inside of the Velox will be up there, and then that groove that's around the Velox, then I'll come down. Um, it'll actually be further on it, be further up there, so it'll probably be about here. So that'll then, what they can do then is that'll then allow them to come down like that and they can sort this out because when you're not doing it yourself and fitting the Velox, it's difficult to then, because if I'd got the Velox and I was doing it, I'd put the Velox in and then I'd plumb down from the groove and set this timber in. It'd be easier for me before the roof would come. But because the roof is fitting them, I can't get this in the right place exactly because I haven't got this, the groove to measure and level from. If you don't know what I mean, I'll take a bit of footage and that's on the screen now to show you what groove I'm on about. And that groove is where the plasterboard sits into um, when you start dressing the plasterboard around your Velox on the inside. So that's what that bit of footage is about now. Okay, so we've done that. So that's our first one. I've got to double this up now, double all of these up now, and then we'll put a little dwarf rafter there in there then to come flush with air because this gap is wider than 600. Are you still with me? Confused yet? Right then. It's 40 mil bigger, you've got to be, width and height with your Velox. Now, our Velox is a 780 uh, height. So I've gone from here then, up to here, 820. This is where the, the, this crappy detail is going to start stepping in. Now, what we've got, if I just get a scrap of wood, right, this foot, this foot is going to get a bit closer and personal, is it? So we've got, that's the inside now, and our double will go on there like that. And then I've got to put a joist hanger around that. Now... 780 is our Velux from here, plus 40 mil is what it tells you to allow, all the way, 20 mil all the way around. And then our next first timber will go there and obviously be doubled, like that. And then we'll put another raft up there, no problem. So, the problem we've got now is this should go, as you can see, I've started to put the lines on there, look. This should then go, the double should go there, if this is a bigger roof. So then you can splay this this way across there. However, 
you will see this is where the ceiling height's going to be we've got to put another cut another one in there off that rafter that we did the one that we forgot about because it was wider than 600 so we put them in now we've got to put another four by two now across here and finish it somewhere here respective to this line the problem i've got is if i put a double there like that then what detail are you going to have to for the airflow because it's going to come up here it's going to come down and it's going to so it's going to look toss anyway we've tried 30 degrees we tried 45 degrees to see whether we can put that there and then but we've always got this what it's going to look like and it's difficult to show you what it's going to look like here you're still going to have like a weird because this is so low is the problem we've got <laughs> Sorry about that. My uh, phone ran out of battery when I'd, I think I was just about to put these small rafters on. And as you can see, well, you won't be able to see, it's uh, chuck it down the rain now. Literally the last 20 minutes and then the clean up and it's chuck it down the rain. So we've had to take shelter in his garage. We've got left there, we've got to take these two straps off that we got, we bent them up out of the way for now. Um, and then I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll step out into the rain, I think, to show you. And then what we've got, we then put a, put the top ones on there, look. And what we've done there is that timber across there is difficult to show you. But what we've done is, if I just get up on here, see the things we do for YouTube, I'm soaking wet now. So what we established was that that was the, that was the Velox there, look. And then what we could manage to do in them is get 30 degrees without it looking really stupid. 30 degrees from there to there. And then this then goes from here to here 30 degrees so all the way up above a slope there and then that goes back to the, the ceiling again and that's what we think is best 30 degrees from the plasterboard groove around the velox across there touch that edge touch this edge and then go across there see all the spots on the camera now i think i'm gonna have to get out the rain now because you've still got to tidy up rubbish got to tidy up look chuck it down the rain Happy August sunshine. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to leave you there now then because I've had enough, if I'm honest. So if you've got any more questions, then feel free to ask them. But um, I'm going to go home now and get a change of clothes out of these wet pants. Ta-da! So I'm back at this gabling roof for the second time since I finished. First time was to put the two joist hangers on that I missed. That's just unfortunate for me stupidly counted the wrong and was too short and then i've had to come back at the request of the building inspector to put an extra strap on the gable wall i'll spin you around show you what i'm talking about and see what your opinions are on it so you'd have seen the video put the straps on this wall on the steel all tech screwed in yes adequate you'd have also seen spin you around because i want to show you that one yet but we put the straps on there, screwed in, fixed to there, at request of the inspector. That's what he said to do because, as I've said, let me step back a little bit so you can see. Lovely, lovely feature wall. We can't put straps down here.
because it'll ruin it, of course, because that's going to be, it's going to be plastered to there and insulated to that point. This could be left. He's asked me to come back and put that strap on there. So I've had to put it down the back of that rafter and then fix it to this wall. And that's what he wants me to do, just to stop uplift on this corner. Now you've seen, obviously, put my straps up there, my gable straps, but as you can see from wall plate, we're talking what, one and a half blocks uh, to the underside of the steel ridge from the wall plate. That's how high that gable is, so that's nonsense anyway. But there we go. I had to come back and put that on. But we can only do what we're told to do by inspectors, and sometimes I just think, you know what? And then when he says to you on the phone, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, I know it's belt and braces, but and yeah, I've got to come back in my own time to put that strap on when there's really no need. Anyway, it's done now. I'll stop moaning and I shall finish on a positive note, which is I've enjoyed doing this. At least it's sunny when I've come back, other than you would have seen me soaked to the pants when we were finishing the roof. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.